Let's Get Lost is one of my all-time favourite songs and it's sung by Chet Baker, a real hero of mine, a troubled soul uh, for sure. And the theme of the song is wonderful. It's just two, two lovers who are so enwrapped in their own world, they don't care what everybody else or anybody else thinks about their relationship and they just want to get lost, get away from everybody and anybody making criticisms about their relationship. So the painting itself is this couple getting into their little sports car and driving away from everyone and everything just to spend their time together by themselves. There are four paintings in the show that absolutely nearly killed me to complete them because they were so detailed and they were the four record shop paintings and each one of them focuses on a genre so I needed some help to make sure that the LP sleeves featured for each genre was the absolute classic of that kind of movement. And so for the hip hop one, I asked two guys, one was Andy Hunt, who is a Sheffield hip hop DJ, and the other one is Mike McQuillan, who was also known as Clipboard, and he's a, a top hip hop fan too. The mod one, uh, I knew some about some things about mod, but not everything, so I also asked my mate, a smooth uh, mod DJ, called Lee Radford and another mate of mine called Johnny Owen who's a film documentary maker. Then for the metal album sleeves, or I know nothing about metal at all, I asked my friend Dave Shack, and Dave Shack is actually uh, connect, has connect, uh, management connections with Iron Maiden but also um, wrote for Kerrang back in the day so he knows his stuff and so those three genres were all helped uh, ably by those guys and then finally the indie store one well that's my domain so I made sure I picked all the ones that I liked Home Comforts um, depicts a guy that's come from Jamaica in the 60s uh, to live and work in the UK so he's left this beautiful sun-drenched uh, country to live in our rain-soaked um, cold wet climate and the only comforts he's got in this grubby little bed sit is uh, managed to acquire himself are uh, some things he's managed to get over from Jamaica in his duffel bag including some precious ska records and in the 60s there was a UK ska explosion and it was created pretty much directly from guys uh, and women coming over from Jamaica and bringing their uh, beautiful culture and style to these shows and um, bringing them down to the clubs. So uh, yeah, this is a, it's a, a great and beautiful uh, history that we've got with uh, with Scar. One thing I really like to do, uh, if I've got the time, is to troll uh, second-hand shops or flea markets and even car boot sales uh, for records. Um, often it's seven inch singles because I like to, when I DJ on the rare occasions, people ask me to play some records. And so I'm always on the hunt for uh, precious little finds, hopefully not spending too much money, but uh, if it's the right thing, and I'll pay the money for it. So yeah, uh, Record Hunters Blues is kind of summing uh, my little passion up, my little hobby. And blues is surely the, the thing for this because you very rarely find anything and you're just trudging in the field or through dusty shelves trying to find a record, it never appears. But there's a little joy in that hunt, it's almost bringing you back to the caveman days. I think the vinyl revolution is purely down to nostalgia in some respects. It's, um, I don't know, it's a rebellion to the digital world that we're engulfed in now where everything basically is spinning through the airways and there's nothing physical and so a lot of the people that are buying the vinyl are just reowning it uh, who've lived their lives with vinyl flogged it all like me when <laughs> I was skinned and now they're trying to re-amass a record collection at great expense because <laughs> it's a fortune this stuff and then obviously the younger generation are, are getting involved too and uh, discovering that joy of playing vinyl but the thing with vinyl is it's a massive commitment um, 
not just financially but also audibly um, yeah because you have to sit down and listen from start to finish on side one and then if you can be asked to get up and turn it over then from side two to the end and that uh, habit has sort of died out now with people listening to music it just cherry picking the favorite song from a record or even it just ends up becoming part of a massive playlist that you're acquiring which is one song after another from different bands and so it's important that uh, vinyl keeps alive that idea and concept that songs by a band are meant to follow on and have a narrative and a story in some respects even if it's just a, a tempo in a sense a fast record followed by a slow followed by too fast and a slow something like that but it's important in that uh, experience and listening to music <laughs> The first record I bought was Mott the Hoople and not All the Young Dudes, which is absolutely a brilliant, brilliant song, but another one of their little hits, uh, Roll Away the Stone. And I can't have been much more than six uh, when it was on the top of the pops, but I just love the intro melody line, so it was brilliant. And then there's kind of this little uh, rap bit in the middle about going to a party on Saturday night, and that's something that I uh, were able to remember and recite and uh, <laughs> sing that in the playground. <laughs> so who would I have at my party? Uh, right, it would basically, first of all, I'd invite John Cooper Clark because he'll talk all the way through the night if no one else can be bothered and uh, crack a few jokes. So that'd be great. And then Grace and Edwin Collins, they're a great team together. Uh, so so much laughter in their, their conversation, so that'd be brilliant. I'd have Ella Fitzgerald because I want to know everything about the early days of jazz and her beautiful voice. Uh, Debbie Harry, of course, um, she lived in her right time in uh, New York in the 70s, so that'd be fantastic to hear all about that. Astrid Gilberto, I'm a bit of a bossa fan, and so uh, to have a beautiful Brazilian voice uh, wafting over the party would be marvellous. Uh, Little Richard, yeah. I mean, again, a bit like John Cooper Clark. Uh, he would light up the light up the party with anecdotes, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, I think that would be it. I would also invite Tom Waits, who is my all-time hero. And yeah, uh, but the thing is, you're not supposed to meet your heroes, and it would probably be a nightmare to have him there. Probably really grumpy and not talk at all. And I would uh, not be able to have a conversation with him because I'd be too starstruck. But I'd have to send out the invite anyway. The best gig I ever went to was really quite easy. It was Arcade Fire at the Lead Mill. It was absolutely stunning, brilliant from start to finish. I mean, I bought the record when it first came out and people were sort of saying that they were brilliant live and I just couldn't understand why people were saying that because if you listen to the record, there's nothing that there that would say that this is going to be an amazing experience. But man, the band themselves, when they hit that stage and they started off with Wake Up, right, the very first song, and the hairs on the back of my neck just stood up. And they stayed stood up all the way through the gig. And I had a big smile on my face all the way through the gig because the power, the energy, the excitement from that band was just unbelievable. It was a religious experience practically, you know. See, because the, the stage is rammed because there must be about 18 people in that band and it's a very small stage and the club itself was rammed as well. There was sweat dripping down the walls, heat, steam everywhere and right at the very end of the gig they all dive into the crowd and one of them makes his way to the back to get into the dressing room and walk straight past me so I gave him a really big hug and he was so sweaty but it was wonderful, it was a fantastic experience me and my wife went and it was just joyous Mine and Janie's song is the Cocktail Twins Ice Blink Look Oh man, that when, I, when that song comes on I just have to run up to Jane and give her a big hug and a snog. It's so, it's, it's such a swell, uh, swelling, gorgeous, um, joyous song. And it was uh, 
on a little playlist that I think Jane had made when we first met and she wanted to play me some of her favourite songs but it was also one of mine already because I'd got the album and knew the album very well so when we both had a connection over this one particular song it was great, it was magical, the spark was lit. <laughs> 